Everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to Hobby Hangout. We've got a really special one for you today where we're going to do our first piece of Warcaster terrain. Uh, Tony! I'm here. Tony's here. Tanner! Hey, everybody. Tanner's also here. Uh, we're going to go over some cool things for you guys. We have announcements. All right, here's our stream schedule. Wednesdays, we have Dev Hangout as usual. Thursdays, we have Get Your Paint On with Jordan. Uh, on February 25th, we're going to have another staff showdown. Tony, do you know what that is? Yeah, that's going to be a very special staff showdown. That will be the first look at a playthrough of Warcaster. So Oz and Hungerford are going to face off and show everybody how the mechanics of the game work. That's Ooh. super exciting. And then on February 28th, we have another hobby hangout. Uh, we'll keep going here. So please remember to... Oh, wait. Mini Crate! Look at Mini Crate. Uh, my favorite Mini Crate... Right now is the Gremlin Spring Break Party. It's super awesome. Also, the uh, VIP is Oudi Bray. Uh, so, <laughs> did I say that wrong? Double, Double O de Bray. Oh, well. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. I've been locked in a hole making Warcaster terrain. Uh, so, we're just going to move on from that embarrassment. And uh, please get Mini Crate. It's super awesome. I'm really struggling. Why don't you tell everybody what you're doing today, Danny? Okay. I'm going to make Warcaster terrain. Um, hey, Tony, do you mind grabbing that awesome piece of Warcaster terrain over there for me? Which one? The giant oh, crane. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> talk, talk to your viewers. Hello, viewers. I hope you're all well. That, uh, that Gremlin Spring Break Party uh, How good is that? mini crate model, that's yeah. what I'm going to use personally for my Gremlin token for Riot Quest. Thank and you. I highly suggest that others of you do the same. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. All right, so I've been locked away in a corner for many, many reasons, but mostly it's so that I can focus and uh, make Warcaster terrain, which is something we've never done. Uh, so we kind of had to, uh, you know, and this is, the kind of, this is the kind of project that, you know, any model maker dreams of, right? Where it's like a game that doesn't have an established style and you kind of get to go in and just create something brand new. And uh, I was lucky enough that um, Wilson was just like, go wild, like have fun, pitch me designs and then make it, which has been really, really exciting. Uh, so today we're going to go over uh, my process for making very, very quick um, Marcher Worlds uh, uh, terrain. So we're going to make some sort of cool like bunker-esque structure, right? Um, and uh, I'm going to just take a second and show you guys um, one of the cool uh, pieces of terrain that I got to make for this project. Uh, you guys can see it here. Where's this camera? It's the webcam there on top of the screen. There it is, on top of the computer. Uh, so this was really, really fun to make. Um, it's this big crane, and this is actually how they, um, this is how they uh, mine the arcanescence, which is something that we talked about on the Primecast. So if you missed that definitely tune in. You can find it. We talked through uh, a decent amount of the fluff and kind of the story behind Warcaster. But the way that Arcanescence is actually mined is with a bomb. <laughs> so you have a big spaceship above this Arc Geyser, um, and we drop a big energy bomb into it, and it basically explodes up into the collection ship. So this is that. This is that Arc Geyser. Now this was made. Um, this was made using MDF actually and uh, some plastic parts. That, uh, that I'll show you. And uh, Hanley, Jeff uh, just commented that it is very heavy. The reason why it's very heavy, actually. It's because you filled it with rocks. I filled it. I literally <laughs> filled it with rocks. <laughs> that is awesome. I didn't even. I, mean, I shot that with you for like two days. I moved that thing around a bunch. I had no idea. It just had no. rocks just no. jammed up into the bottom. Tanner and I had so much fun with this as we frantically ran around with ch like chickens with our heads cut off because I'm like, all right, Tanner, I think I clogged all of the potential leaks. Uh, let's dump a bunch of rocks in here, and then let's pour resin into it to lock the rocks in. Spoiler alert, he did not seal I, all the leaks. I did absolutely <laughs> he said, not. <laughs> he said, call me immediately if this leaks, and I called him immediately. So I frantically run downstairs, and I, uh, I like, took a hot... I just took, like, we have this big crock pot full of hot glue, and I just dumped hot glue all over the surface of it to try to clog the leak, but then I accidentally poured resin into the, um, <laughs> into the hot glue crock pot. It was an absolute mess. Um, but the top here, this was all made out of MDF, which you guys can see like a lot of laser cut terrain is made out of that nowadays. But, you know, I like to block things out 
of it because you can get it in like three quarter inch sheets. You can get it in, uh, you can get it in, uh, you know, three quarter, three quarter inch, half inch, one quarter inch. And Standard if you seal dimensions. the, yeah, if you seal, seal the edge with super glue and then sand it, um, you can make these mechanical shapes very, very quickly, much quicker than you would be able to uh, with, um, you know, building it up out of styrene pieces. You guys can see I kit bashed a lot. Uh, this is just a piece of PVC from the hardware store. Um, same with uh, this thing here. You guys can see this is straight up. Just I didn't do anything to it. Uh, it's just PVC from the store. So I have a little bit of a question for for like using MDF. Yeah. Um, some of us who who have hobbied in the past have used a lot of foam core. Yeah. For building structures, what is the benefit of using MDF? Like, why would someone want to use MDF versus? Uh, foam core, and I mean, probably specifically if they're not professional terrain makers. Right. So um, there, are, there are a few reasons I chose to use MDF. Right. And, and actually, uh, I do not use MDF for everything. Like in, in film, in film, I use MDF for for everything because of durability. Right. And that's one of the main reasons I chose to do this for Warcaster was it's a crane, so it's going to be teetery. Uh, it, it has to be extremely durable because it's such an off balance type of shape. Right. Um, but the the main reason. Um, the main reason I, uh, sorry, I'm seeing Aggie text, uh, dork wrong. Nice spelling, <laughs> bork. Um, so, uh, one of, all right, foam core I use for buildings, for gaming terrain, right? Because I'm going to cover it with like a stucco pass or, and it has to be, it, we want it to be very light because I'm shipping it. Now, um, something like the crane where it's mechanical though, the last thing I want to have to do is create something that has that foam edge oh, and have right. to mask yeah. it with like putty and then sand it. Yeah. And then what happens if somebody accidentally dings it? Now I've got foam yeah. showing through and, the and corner. Yeah, I was going to say, just for some context, if you've never cut foam core before, it's, it's a piece of foam uh, sandwiched between two pieces of card. And so when you cut it, it leaves an exposed rough mm -hmm. edge of foam. Yep. So, uh, you know, that's the main, you know, that's probably the main reason I used MDF. It, you can get it to look very mechanical very, very quickly by just pouring super glue all over the edge. Or uh, I get spray shellac from the hardware store. It's a wood finish, and you can douse the whole thing in spray shellac and then sand it back. Then I use a uh, thick automotive high build primer and just kind of spray the crap out of it and, uh, you know, kind of sand it, and you can go from there. Um, so let's get started. Uh, somebody back in the chat actually asked, uh, was that an electrical box? That was, that was Travis. Sure was. It was Travis. Sure and is. that is exactly what it was. Uh, a lot of people, um, do this on the interwebs, right? It's, it's a really good starting point. These are electrical conduit boxes, right? Um, and they're a really good starting point for sci-fi terrain, except the, the one problem, uh, the one problem with it is, uh, it, it does look very generic. It does look very recognizable. So um, you, uh, you do want to add a lot of details to it. You want to dress it up and make it look uh, different. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you today so that it doesn't just look like the generic, um, you know, uh, electrical box, uh, you know, terrain that you see online. Um, now, something else uh, that's important. The reason why I started actually with these um, is uh, when we were designing, when I, when I had the chance to do some of the art direction on what the world would look like for this, um, the, the marcher worlds are kind of the ultimate upcyclers, right? Like they, they don't have access to all of the fancy, um, you know, gear and fancy tools that the Alliance would. Right. So you're going to see a lot more kind of weathering um, and, and just kind of their stuff is a bit more bashed together. Not, not cobbled, you know, they still have uh, a good, good technology, but, but their stuff is a little bit more rough. Um, and, uh, so something, what was I going to say? Where should I go from here? I'm trying to think. Uh, the other, the other reason I started with the electrical box is, um, is time, right? It, it already gave me a nice surface to work off of. I, I always have a ton of projects. I have a lot. I wear, and Tony can attest to this. I wear like five different hats at Privateer. Um, and, uh, so I, I don't always have as much time as I'd like on some of the tables. So I, uh, this was a really, really fast way to, um, to get this done. Uh, so when, I, when you start with, this, uh, with these electrical boxes, something that they come with, and you can kind of see, uh, I'm not going to use this one. I just brought it as another example. Um, oh, and the other nice thing about this 
is uh, they're like a dollar fifty, right? Tanner, you work construction. I mean, they're how much are these? These are like less than five bucks. Well, I never they're really cheap. had to buy any any new work kind of stuff because that's not the business that I was in. You're but in exploding things, not building things. More right? or less, yeah. However, they are not that pricey, and for what you're getting as a base to work with. There's really no reason not to consider it as an option because it just saves you so much initial build time on right. the piece that you're working with. Exactly. And uh, something to keep in mind, though, is, is you'll see on these, they have, uh, <laughs> they have these kind of flaps. They always have these interesting, weird shapes that don't really make sense. And also, uh, take it off of scale. Like, these holes would be way out of scale even if they were meant to, to uh, you know, to build things up, right? Uh, so I've got to cut these off. And that's going to be the first step. So give me just two seconds while I take off my mic. And I gotta put on a dust mask. Safety is our third most priority here at Privateer Press. <clears throat> All right. I'm Tanner. Yes, sir. Sorry, hold your breath. I am already going to die of lung cancer. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now the nice thing is he's not sitting close enough for any of this. So it's literally not being able to get my not being able to get my mic back on. Also, I love that I was just talking without having a mic on. Yeah, it was still right. picking you up. And Tanner was covering for you, picking up your slack. Thank you. As <laughs> usual. Ooh. All right, so uh, for this, I'm actually going to use uh, a Dremel. This is just a fiberglass cutoff wheel. Uh, I have another tool at home that I like to use as well. It's, a, uh, it's like a reciprocating multi-tool that's really, really sweet. And then uh, camera, uh, do you want to switch to the... The, um, the bench clamp? Bench clamp. Or, well, yeah. There we go. So we've talked about this before when we were talking about uh, using a jeweler saw, and right. you had mentioned that you, you love this bench clamp, so we'll get to see how that works today. So remember my favorite tool that I was talking about a few weeks ago, the, the jeweler saw, where you can run through you know, resin and all sorts of stuff. This is super, super useful. Uh, you can also make one by just taking a clamp and a piece of wood with a groove cut in it, but this allows you to, um, this allows you to like, hold your piece steady right, and cut through you know, the groove allows you to cut all the way through. Uh, and, and the other reason why I'm gonna use this for what I'm about to do is this is what would be called like a sacrificial block, right? I'm not worried about, uh, you know, cutting into it. Uh, this is a nice little table, so I don't wanna accidentally hit it and grind, grind into it. So I'm actually gonna use the bench pin right now uh, to cut these parts. Um, it gives me kind of a sturdy working surface. So let's go ahead, turn this on. Now we'll want to dial the speed down a little bit, um, because if we go too fast, we'll uh, melt the plastic more than we'd like. And I'm going to come at an angle with it. We want to go a little faster. There we go. Is there, hey, Danny, is there any way we can uh, get a different angle on that? Huh? Is there a different, can we get a different angle on that so we can see it? I mean, I can try. Be, be safe. There you go. There we go. I try to pick off that molten plastic uh, before it gets too hard. Nope, Tony, I got to cut this one like this. That's fine. Don't hurt yourself. Now, you can buy cutoff discs for a rotary tool like this at the hardware store, right? Yep. You're being asked about your uh, circle template there, that green thing, Danny. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. That thing's sweet. Ooh. You're gonna have to wait for your answer, Brian. Yeah, uh, you can just pick that up at. Uh, I hope the suspense doesn't kill you. At uh, you know, Staples or whatever. Um, okay, so we've got this thing. I'm gonna use my knife to kind of trim it back. You know, just some of the extra flashing, make that all kind of clean, so that it can be a. Uh, it can actually look like a proper kind of, you know, built-in line. I'm gonna use my blade to kind of scrape it all flat and nice. Friday! Woo! Friday. You guys in the chat and comments, what are your uh, hobby weekend plans? What are you working on this weekend? Let's see. Okay, so 
While I have my uh, Dremel set up, um, I'm going to take care of a few other things that I know I'm going to use. Um, second, sorry, my glasses are fogging. Boop, boop, boop. Too much caffeine, too much caffeine, hand surgery. Let's see. Brother right. Chaplain Kage, I would love to see your custom Widowmaker. That sounds awesome. All right. So what I want to do also, since I'm going to use a bunch of PVC bits, you guys can see here. See how it, it's kind of hard to see, but it has text and a logo on it, which makes it look like PVC. So I want to take a second and, uh, and grind that off while I've got all of the stuff out to do that. Um, so we're just going to change bits real quick. And we're going to get a uh, little drum sander on there. There we go. Oh, yeah, Jeff got his fancy new airbrush. I just got an airbrush recently as well to start nice. using it to paint up minis. I'm very excited for it. You want to switch over to the bench pen? You guys can see I'm gently just kind of sanding off these uh, the logos here. It's really hard to see with these safety goggles on. Don't go too crazy with it. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, is it a problem if you just like, if you go too deep, are you gonna end up gouging and? Yeah, but I'll normally go in with a little bit of filler. Okay. Fill it back anyway. Okay. Uh, that is the one thing we probably won't do on live stream today is how I do my filler work because it's very, very, uh, I do it in a spray booth because I use a uh, polyester automotive glazing putty, like a Bondo. Okay. It's more durable, and it goes on quicker than like an epoxy sculpt, you know? When so, I tend to use that, but I don't want to gas you guys out. When it comes to uh, cutting, sanding, or grinding virtually anything, it's a lot easier to stop, check your work, and look and see if you need to do more than it is to uncut or ungrind something or unsand something. Yeah, so what I do is I, I do the main work with this, the, the big tool, right? And then I stop right before I, where I need to do it, or where I need to stop, and uh, I go in with some hand sandpaper, and I do it by hand. Um, so that should be good. There we go. All right. One second. No, nah, everybody's just kind of talking about uh, the, the hobby projects that they're doing this weekend. Um, yeah, everybody's like got a, got a lot of stuff going on. I, uh, I've been ignoring chat because Aggie was doing such a good job of distracting me. <laughs> so I've been avoiding it for a hot second because <laughs> I was just like completely losing my train of thought. I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm a little... Uh, Most of you guys already know. Not amazing right now. But when you finish up those projects, make sure that you post them online with uh, hashtag P3 Painters or hashtag P3 Kit Bashers. Oh, yeah, and follow our Instagram at uh, privateer underscore press underscore terrain on Instagram um, because uh, I'll be posting a lot more cool uh, Warcaster stuff pretty soon. So you guys can see I'm going in with some uh, harsher grit sandpaper and kind of cleaning that up. Um, Don't worry, Austin, whoever you are, I would never ignore you. Let's see. Danny, how excited are you to see Display of Painted at Adepticon, says Dude, Travis? so excited. You want to tell us a little more about Display of Painted? I do. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with um, Adepticon, they put on a really, really cool thing called Armies on Parade, and they have been kind enough to let us join in. Uh, we're going to uh, be having a, a painting competition, basically, where you make a sweet display base, and you um, you make a sweet display base, and you display your painted army, and you can win cool prizes, and you'll get to see everyone's uh, you'll get to see everyone's um, you know super super cool armies on display. Uh, I will be one of the judges for that, so I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. The rules are online. Um, 
it's, it's super, super fun. I made an insider that posted this week on how I made my army tray. Uh, it has my face in it. I call it Mount Kiladan Jaro. Oh, boy. Um, you're welcome. And, uh, I'm shaking my head over here. I just, <laughs> I'm you still need, waiting you for need the to know that. Army. That's what I'm Dude, I'm so excited for that. So I'm 3D printing goofy versions of my face and gluing them onto Mana Wars so I can create Dana War Army. Um, it's going to be awesome. All right, so that's that. Uh, I now have all of these pieces sanded. Now, something that came up really quickly. Actually, wait, can you go up to uh, Jesus? Hi, Jesus. So Jesus is one of my students. We're doing an independent study right now, which is really fun. Uh, do you know any good sets for kit bashing? I want to uh, have a good starting point for kit bashing models. Um, no, I don't. Uh, the best thing I can recommend, because uh, I know you're also on a budget since you're a college student, right, is to literally just collect trash. Honestly, like as you go and you see a cool bottle cap or you see a cool, uh, you know, weird section of like a clock hand or something, go pick it up, save it, right? Um, and so, you know, you, you got to be a little bit of a hoarder, which drives my roommates nuts, but, um, but it is what it takes. Now, one of the cool things I do, once I have a bunch of model parts that I like, um, and I'll be showing this off in a second, oh, well, we'll just show it now, is uh, I mold them. Right? So I line them all up, I make a flat mold. These are all model parts I've collected over the past like six years that I consistently make molds of. And, um, and uh, that way I can just um, cast, I can just, uh, you know, cast you them just, and use them whenever I yeah, want. Yeah, you just make a giant sheet of random exactly. cool looking things that you, can, you have access to all the time. Exactly, and then yeah. I just hand it to Tanner and be like, run this mold four times, please. Now, is that the kind of thing that's uh, kind of reasonable, again, for, for non-professionals? Because when you're doing this eight hours a day all the time, trying to crank out this, the terrain, uh, and you have the facilities, it's worth it to make the mold. Is this is something that can be easily accomplished at home? Yeah, yeah. this type of mold for sure. This type of mold is extremely easy because this is what's called a flat pour. Doesn't require it vacuuming doesn't or requ pressurization. Yeah. It requires zero, zero, uh, you know, special equipment. Um, you literally glue. Let's say I have a model part like this. Glue it down onto a sheet. Make a box around it. Pour silicone on it, which you can buy at craft stores, and uh, then you pop it off and you just pour, you know, your resin into it and just squeegee it off. Like it's it's that easy. I take a little uh, Q-tip and jam it in the mold to pop any surface bubbles. Um, also, I saw Aggie, I think, posted, uh, you know, go to Goodwill. That's another really great place to go. So I go to the toy section in Goodwill, and I just grab, like, weird trucks and random things, and I take them apart. Now, the one problem with that is a lot of the time uh, kids' toys are made with uh, what's called polypropylene plastic, which does not like to take paint well. So you actually want to get at an automotive store. It's like 15 to 20 bucks a can of uh, what's called Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. Um, and that's super useful. It actually makes paint stick to things. So if you're using so, all sorts of different types of plastic, spray it with a little adhesion promoter. A little goes a long way. Is it like um, a like a mega primer? Like even if you no. prime a kid's toy, it doesn't uh, it won't hold the primer well. Yeah, it'll peel right off. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's why because they want kids' toys to be really easy to clean and disinfect. So they make them a lot of the time out of polypropylene. Uh, and, and speaking of that, you can see that before I did anything on this, um, I actually sanded it. I scuffed it up with some finer sandpaper. Um, so that everything kind of sticks to it because this stuff doesn't really like to take paint amazingly uh, if you don't sand it. It's too smooth. Your stuff will just kind of scrape off. So. And Austin is asking, uh, talking about that mold, could you use that mold for making doors? I, I do. He I has mold. several door molds <laughs> here <laughs> like that. <laughs> A bunch of door molds. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the uh, infernal tower that you built, that door with the rune on it is Dude, made with a flat pour mold. Just so like much. That. that infernal tower is so heavy because I basically cast every section of it in resin to speed up the process. Uh, I do a lot of mold prep, a lot of mold, a lot of mold prep. Jesus, go to the one in uh, go to the one in Bellevue. That thing is awesome. Go to the Goodwill in Bellevue. It's where all the rich people live, so you always get good <laughs> stuff. No, it's like it's like why and and I will stop being distracted in a second, Tony. But the uh, <laughs> likely story. <laughs> but the uh, the best place to get good, to go to Goodwill is Florida because all the old people move to Florida to die, and then their kids don't want to bring back their stuff, and they're rich, so they always have really really good stuff at the Goodwills in Florida. Um, just a secret cheat code. Anyway, we're gonna get moving on this. Uh, I don't exactly know what I want this to be. I think I want it to, uh, 
There's like a storage shed or something? Store, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, is some sort of storage outpost. Now, something else that I uh, played with a lot, um, when, when you're designing a piece of terrain or, or something for a movie or you know just something for a new army, you have to think about like what the uh, visual shape language will be that's carried throughout the army. Right, a kind of set of artistic guidelines. So uh, something that we came up with for the free worlders, uh, or for the uh, marcher worlds, is, um, is uh, kind of this three layer thing we've got going on. A lot of different layers of plating um, and no rivets, thank the Lord. <laughs> um, so you guys can see that a lot of this has that kind of one, two, three layer. I, yeah, I'm betting that's, now that I'm noticing that, that probably sped up your process quite a bit not oh, yeah. having to put rivets oh, on Oh, yeah. Things. No, I straight up went to Wilson. And I was like, you know what will help me so much? Hit all of our deadlines forever. Please, God, no rivets. And his response was perfect. He's like, yeah, because in the future, uh, they finally learned to weld well. You know? <laughs> what I am going to miss are all of the giant flathead screws. Right. So, um... So another thing that I push in the uh, Marcher Worlds is uh, this kind of straight versus curve thing. Now, luckily, this already had this kind of, uh, you know, circular pattern built in, which you can kind of see repeated throughout our models even. Um, so I just got it kind of lucky when I found this in the hardware store. But you can see this uh, straight versus curve principle that we've got kind of going on. Um, and that was really kind of fun to accentuate. Something, um, something that I really like about this uh, Warcaster terrain that you've built is you obviously put a lot of attention in how would these model-sized people access and use this equipment. Yeah. And there's a lot of like scaffolds and platforms mm -hmm. and ladders that makes it feel really realistic. Right. Like people are actually working there. Which, another thing, if you have time, but it, this, is, this is definitely more of the like, we can do this here because we have a good molding facility, is instead of uh, you know, making all of these by hand, because ladders can be a real, a real pain, same with scaffolding. Uh, we actually just made one really, really nice one. Uh, I believe Evan made this um, when we were working on the airship. And, uh, and uh, we molded it, right? So I have a ladder. And then I had him cut just this support section, right? Widen it and span it with some styrene. And then we remolded it so we can cast these kind of modular scaffold pieces that we can then butt up against each other and cut to whatever length we want. That's why we have these kind of break points here. Uh, so, that it, so that you can actually have a nice, clean place to cut it where it looks like you meant to cut it there. Um, you guys can kind of see how that scaffolding works you know, on a piece like this. It makes it very, very quick. Yeah, and the nice thing is if you've got something like that going on, you can just add it into anything in any configuration. You don't necessarily have to have like a solid, you know, unique use for that part. Exactly, exactly. So something I want to do because uh, terrain, you know, flat terrain makes me sad even though it's efficient. Um, and it, Travis and I have talked about this a lot, flat terrain versus uh, playable terrain, and, uh, or versus, sorry, 3D terrain. Um, I, I like having lots of different, oops, lots of different levels um, you know, on my terrain. So I'm actually gonna make this top a platform, even though it's some sort of kind of storage unit. I wanna build up some sort of, uh, some sort of edge to this. Um, Maybe put like a handrail or something? Yeah, not a handrail, because I hate making handrails, but some sort, <laughs> of, <laughs> some sort of topper. Uh, Tony, actually, sorry to make you get up again, but we've got that cool, uh, the cool like bomb silo. You want to grab that um, so I can kind of show what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here. Um, so let's see. Any other cool questions? Where is my ruler? That one, yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. We'll show that in a second. Here is my ruler. And on by proxy, I believe the reason for that is that the Riot Quest scale is not exactly the same as the War Machine scale, as far as I can tell. Man, I love Riot Quest. That stuff, it's so wonky and so cool. It's so, very, very my speed. Um, real quick, though, uh, this is a piece that I'm kind of going to, you know, base this guy off of. I'm kind of making a smaller version. You guys can see the, like, bulkhead door there. Um, this was all just made with thick cardboard, actually, this part. Uh, but I'm going to kind of add this layer detail right now to the top of, uh, of this guy. Um, you guys can kind of see that there. Now, cool thing, guess what this is made out of? Um, it's one of those storage bins. It's literally this guy. Um, it's one of these. And I just took it to the bandsaw. 
So I stuffed it with a bunch of foam so that it didn't collapse and get pushed down by the bandsaw. And then I just ran it through to make it thinner. And to make this, uh, you know, this, uh, basically I, I lined it up where, where this insets. Because this has an area where you're supposed to put a label. If you look at these things, and I just cut it right there so that I could slip a door in there. You're like repeatedly blowing Travis's mind right now. Like he <laughs> just is losing it over there. I just imagine that Vince McMahon gif where he's more like, ugh, ugh, every single time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I explain the way that I got into minis, because um, I, was, I, I was like, I couldn't afford the minis growing up, so I would build terrain. And I would, uh, like, this was when I was, like, 13. Doug remembers this. Uh, so I, I, would, I would build terrain, and I would trade it to the local game stores uh, for store credit. And they'd, uh, I'd basically populate their stores with terrain, and they'd give me minis. Um, so that I had is... to find really, really cheap ways to, to make this stuff. I'd do things like I'd take one of these, and I'd flip it upside down. I'd put a piece of foam core in it. Um, and then I'd sell it on eBay for like 50 bucks. I'd spray paint it in metal. That's it very, that's sweet. very resourceful. <laughs> that's awesome. That is, so that that's is kinda, the coolest nerd hustle ever. That's kind of how I got used to, uh, yeah, I used to have a, a line of resin bases and Tony, you'll love this. When I was 15, guess what the baseline was called? Does it have Danny in it? Heck yeah, it does. It was Dantasmic Creations. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> like this neurosis was, is not anything Was that the inception point? For, for all your Dan puns today, uh, yeah, kind of like yeah, yeah. kick it off. Absolutely. Uh, so we got uh, Chewy8 has a question about yes, uh, Warcaster. Uh, does it show the same base size as War Machine? Uh, and yes, they, they're the same yeah. base sizes. So we're going to go, let's say, three and a half inches. So I'm going to mark that here. This is just a big piece of uh, square styrene stock. And I just want to throw out, we've been getting a, a couple of viewer comments, um, a couple from Enix and, and others, about just some ideas of what this terrain could be. So Danny's kind of building a storage house, but we've had, you know, it could be some kind of shield or, or power generator, or you could make it taller or just make it like a little, uh, you know, guardhouse bunker, uh, anything like that. So just a, a few simple changes and just uh, an idea of how you want to add the details to it. Right. I mean, just like for the versatility, right? Like, like here. This, I'm doing a very similar technique, and this is a crane, all right? This, with some sort of mechanical door on the top and a bulkhead entrance, uh, this is a bomb storage unit, you know? Like the crane, this opens up, the crane comes down, picks up a new bomb, explodes the arc geyser, you know? Well, and you could probably, I mean, if you were, if you were really wanting to build a lot of terrain, would it be feasible to kind of prep a bunch of these boxes similarly at a time, Absolutely. and then when you're building them, just trick them out just yeah. a little differently for each use. No, that's how I, that's like the main way I hit my deadlines easily, is <laughs> I do, I do a absolute ton of prep on the front end, and it actually freaks my bosses out at every job, because I do so much prep, and they're like, you're a week away, and you don't really have anything, and I'm like, no, no, no. I have everything. I'm basically making big boy Legos. Yeah. You know, I'm like, here's this box. Trust me, when I glue this bit to this thing and then I paint it, it's done. It just took me three weeks to make all of the bit sheets. You know, that, I mean, that's <laughs> like, actually a really great comparison because um, I mean, it happens in a lot of creative projects, but especially this type of thing where you spend most of your time like laying out your Legos, identifying which pieces you're going to put together, how they might fit, what they're going to do, separating them in piles by color size. And then when you actually put the Legos together, if your pieces are all organized correctly, the build is very fast. Absolutely. These uh, boxes, they are neither printed nor resin copied. These were purchased from the hardware store. You can get these at a your local hardware store too, or something very similar for just a, in the electrical just a, section for just a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. And then those uh, square styrene blocks that he's using, I believe are just craft store or am I mistaken? Uh, not every craft. So it's not, you're not going to be able to get it at like a, uh, you know, Michael's or a Joanne fabrics, right? But you'll, uh, you can get it at any kind of model hobby store. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, your, your like hobby towns, you know, those sort of things, right? Uh, anywhere that they do like model train, Look up in your area, like model train supply store, and you'll be able to find all sorts of cool styrene. Amazon, you know. I find it hard to shop for styrene parts on Amazon unless I know exactly what I'm looking exactly. for. Um, just because it's hard to see uh, 
exactly what the size and shape is. If, if you can get details, but I'll tell you what, like I can look at a piece of something and know whether it might work for what I want. But if you tell me it's an eighth of an inch or a 32nd of an inch or whatever, I right. don't always know what that, that size is. So I definitely prefer going into a store to buy hobby supplies. Well, and so, so the nice thing too, and I'm pretty bad about this, but I, I have gotten better about it over the years, is uh, if you look at Styrene, I don't know if I'm allowed to show this brand name, but whatever. Um, you can see it has a number on it. So I'll kind of keep a list of like mm-hmm. which, uh, which, which rods and which uh, you know, strips I use the most. And I'll know that like, okay, I use uh, strip, you know, nine zero eight six three a bunch you know so cool i'll order you know that that way when i do run out i can i can just order it again from amazon easily uh so i've now glued these in place um a quick way to not have to measure as much as you glue them down and then you just measure the in between um so this is let's see i hate this ruler you're getting uh you're getting some requests too yeah Add some LEDs. I did. Do you have a door planned for that thing? Yes, I do. Ooh, awesome. Aggie mentions uh, they use dollar store for sale signs as cheap plastic yeah. card. And I think that's a great idea. That's really, awesome. Yeah, that's a that. great idea. So in the uh, me being poor growing up thing, that's actually how I did it. So my dad owned a, uh, he did real estate. So I'd, uh, every now and then when his uh, for sale sign started to deteriorate a little too much, I'd take it and use the plastic. Another good one is go to... <laughs> Go to like your local grocery store and ask for the membership cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty good too. Yeah, old um, gift cards and stuff. You know, yeah. if you you once you used it up and cleared it out, I don't know if the store needs to hang no, on to it anymore. No, they don't. Growing up, I used to I used to ask to have all of them. They'd be like, "Oh, we can throw this out." I was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna keep it." Forgetting my measurement already. Brian Connolly says, "Where did you get the shapes for doors?" I'm sure we will find out when we get to putting a door on this thing, because I would like to know as well. Yeah, well, one thing we forgot to mention, too, because we, we're about 40 minutes in, is that oh um, uh, oh today goodness. we are planning to go for about 90 minutes, so we're, we're going to do an extra half an hour, so I can even Danny go, can show off uh, some of this process. I don't know about Tanner, but I can even go longer, a little longer than that if we need to. So, My goal so is yeah, to hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody can stay with us for the whole time, but if not, that's cool. You'll be able to watch how this all wraps up. Uh, Videos on our YouTube channel, Privateer Press Prime. Oh my goodness. And also, while Danny is sanding down some stuff, if you have missed uh, any of our Warcaster announcements from earlier in the week, you can go back and watch those on Privateer Press Prime go. or Twitch. You can see the Warcast where we talk uh, a bit about Warcaster. And also on yesterday's Get Your Paint On, we painted up a Paladin Weaver, so you get your first look at that model in uh, 3D. And also, Hungerford was on answering some questions about uh, the function of Warcaster. And you can go to warcaster.com to keep up with all of the uh, comings and goings and updates about Warcaster. Oh my gosh, I get it. Wait, Warcast. Warcaster. Like, Is this the first time you're prime doing that? Prime cast. You just get, okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, why does that surprise you at all? I'm in my own little fantasy world. Fantasy world. You are getting some questions about the tool you're using to cut that styrene rod with it that. Looks brace like a on giant it. leaf. This thing? Mm-hmm. This thing's sweet, except mine's broken. I need to buy a new one. This is just it's called an easy cutter. Now the cool thing about this one before it broke is it had this adjustable wall where it had angles. Ooh. It's like it'd be like 45 degrees, and the nice thing is this unscrews. It's like 25 bucks, and you it can works buy like a, new a miter one. saw almost. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. it cuts right through styrene. It's this thick blade. Very um, cool. It's absolutely sweet. Yeah, come on, man. I'm struggling right now. Try and keep it on camera if you can, Danny. Don't tell me how to live my life, Tony. He's not telling you how to live your life. He's telling you how to do your how job. How to do your it's job. Different. Just got to trim this down until it fits correctly. Nice. Nailed it. Beautiful. All right, and then I'm going to use my other, one of my other favorite tools, which is this machinist square, just to make sure this is all squared up. And it is. See, I, like, I'm always interested to find out just the, the tiny ways in which you add a professional, I do this all the time and know what I'm doing, touch to this, because like things like using squares 
to measure right angles. Uh, obviously, some of the tools you have are not necessary for, for a home hobbyist who is just kind of doing this sometimes because if you're making, you know, tons of cuts, you may not need a special knife for it, but it might help a lot. But just being able to see, like, my current knowledge of doing things is very general. Well, and I don't I love, even use it to... Yeah, I love seeing the proper way to do it. I don't even use it to, to check. I use it to actually to square snap it, it in. Snap it in, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it so does I, both at the same time. But again, I'd, I would have just, you know, I would have futzed with it with my fingers till I thought it looked right. I would have never thought to just, you know, yeah, I don't, hey, here's a tool meant exactly for that. The, the problem is I don't, so I don't have the novelty all the time to uh, be able to do that. Like, I just don't have time. Right, sure. Right, so everything I do, I create a lot of custom jigs uh, to, save, to save me time. So we'll go with seven and a half centimeters. Yeah, it's always, I, I, and one of the things that comes up in doing projects um especially professionally is that you you have very specific parameters on what you can and can't do right um, budgets both for for finances materials and time and so having to come up with solutions uh for how to do things not only uh as cheaply as possible or with as few resources as possible but also as fast as possible right no, absolutely so i saw you taking a measurement of the interior diameter of that that barrier you just created what are you doing now I'm going to create some sort of little, uh, just a cool little platform to cover up that. Uh, here, give me one second. Sorry. That little I have trouble remembering. Top. It's one of the, the things I do have trouble multitasking on is remembering numbers and, uh, and talking at the same time. I actually have a thing that's basically like number dyslexia. Um, and I swap numbers back and forth. So give me just one second. Um, and notice I'm using this, uh, this kind of triangle because. It allows me also to keep everything square. So once I've got this measurement, you know, I can kind of line that triangle, or I can just, you know, if I had a long enough one, I can just butt this up against it and make sure it's all square and nice. Um, now, what I intend to do. Ah, uh, you're just making an insert to cover up that. Exactly. I want to cover up that mold line. Uh, it'll also, uh, I'm actually probably going to cut this a little bit smaller. Um, Really glad that Brother Chaplain Cage knows what I'm talking about. It's called the uh, sequencing processing. I flip numbers back and forth. So addresses. Poor, poor Dieter has to fix my time card almost every week because <laughs> I, I, swap, I swap the numbers. Back. Sherry just knows now not to get mad. She just is like, eh, it's fine. Let's see. So I'm actually going to cut this slightly smaller so that it's going to create another level of... Uh, of inset detail. I'll show you what that means. But when I can, I'd like to have more like lines for paint to kind of flow into. So you can see I just score and snap the styrene. And this should fit. Oh, right. look at this. Beautiful. Yeah. First should try. Fit right in, but I want Watch your head a little bit, Dan. One second, Tony. I can't yet. So I'm not completely square up here. So you can use this to check it, and I'll know where I need to trim it. One second, sorry, my head's going to block this. I'm just trying to trim this detail. So this is by far the most involved hobby hangout we've ever done, where I'm just building, like scratch building a, uh, a piece of terrain. Right on live stream. Okay, so sweet. I like that. So I'll scuff the bottom of the styrene a little bit as For well. For better glue adhesion. Yeah, to help the glue stick nicely, because that is one of the problems. Is if you are gluing different types of plastic to uh, um, to each other, not all glues work super well. So I tend to, if I don't know what the types of plastic are, I'll use super glue. Do you have to do that to the surface that you're adhering it to as I well? I did. Okay. Uh, like I did that before I did anything. He sanded that I whole sanded box down. Because I sanded it with like, yeah, 220 or 320 grit um, sandpaper uh, just to help the paint stick. You can kind of see that it's, it's roughed up compared to like this shiny, shimmery, glittery Gotcha. One, okay. Right? That'll help paint and whatever I need to uh, stick to it. Um, let's see. What else? What else? I want to add some little corner details so I'm just gonna do a quick trick here get some sort of square piece 
Uh, DGC wants to know, do you think you can get a good magnetic hold through a thin styrene sheet? I'm not exactly sure all I'm the details sure that. of that, but yeah, Dor- uh, Dorian, if you can um, be a little more specific in, in what you're asking, we'll try to get that question answered. So tell us what you're doing right now. I want little corners. Just oh. corners? Uh, yeah, I will show you exactly what that means in a second. So I cut a piece of square stock, and I'm going to use my clippers. And, clip and I'm going to cover my face and eyes. These cool little corners. All right. Then I'm going to use some, uh, now that I'm, no, I'm gluing styrene to styrene, I can actually use some styrene cement. Uh, it'll make life a lot easier. Now one of the cool tricks, and you can see I made this handy dandy little holder so that I don't accidentally tip my styrene cement over. Um, Looks like it's just a piece of PVC glued to a solid base that fits the bottle, right? Sure is, and it's got a little tube to hold the brush. Oh, very um, cool. But I can literally just pick this up with the hobby knife, place it here in the corner, and you can just wick your glue in there. Um, whoops, screwed that up. I also glued this off at an angle. Whoopsies. This is what happens when you rush. Yeah, we had a question. We had a question from Aggie. Uh, wanted to know if that circular, that triple circular design on the um, side of the building or side of the crane was something that you you carved in, and if that was the Marcher World's logo. That is uh, there for drilling conduits into it. Actually. Yeah, part yeah. of the box, and that that is definitely not the logo for the Marcher World. Yeah, that's there because these are electric conduit boxes, right? So that's there to uh, so you can just pop that shape out on site when you're working as an electrician and drop your, uh, your conduit tube right into it. Um, and I'm being a little nitpicky here, so I'm going to try to carefully. So what, so you mentioned earlier about how this is going to be a Marcher Worlds building, uh, and the building itself is, is kind of generic. Uh, the aesthetic of the box we kind of, or you had kind of chosen to be representative of the Marcher Worlds, but as you're going forward with, with terrain projects, um, for Warcaster, what sorts of things are you thinking about how to make this building specifically fit um, a, a Marcher Worlds aesthetic? Right, so Marcher Worlds, like I was saying, are kind of upcyclers. They cobble things together, so lots of exposed piping. Uh, so something I plan to do as I was talking about making those kind of like big boy Lego kits, so to speak, uh, is um, I plan to make uh, like exposed inset piping bits, almost like it's a, a box where you can see the pipe in it um, and the wires in it, and I'll cast that. So all I have to do is take my Dremel, cut a rectangular hole in something like this, or whatever type of structure I'm making, and then, uh, come on, get out of there. And then uh, I can drop that casting in there. Come on. I'm struggling getting this thing out of here. Big tool. Danny, do you have something uh, something planned that you're going to put in the top center of that, or are you just making it look nice from above? I'm just making it look nice from above. For something like this, you could probably also design like a large uh, air handler or box of some kind that can go on top of there. Well, and that's another thing I plan to do is uh, take the faction logo. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'll probably just model that in 3D and cast a bunch of those so I can just glue the emblems on. To the terrain. <laughs> so, so the alliance, <laughs> so the alliance can easily identify your building from the air. That's right. That's right. I have not picked a uh, Warcaster faction. You I'm, haven't. I'm, no, I'm waiting. You're, to are, you're undecided. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what. Because uh, I know there's going to be more factions, oh, correct? Man. I'm no, waiting I, to see what's available. I got, I got grabbed as soon as I saw the concept art for the, uh, for the first two factions. So I, I'm definitely alliance all the way. No, I am March of Worlds, but I can tell you I've seen the third faction. Not going to talk about it, but... Uh, I'm getting that one as well. Oh, my God. <laughs> These guys know more than I do. Well, it's because we're friends with Doug. Right now, I'm just fully engrossed in the Riot Quest train. Dude, you play that game so much. I, it's not it's even awesome. funny. Yeah. yeah, he plays it like every day. <laughs> like I, I so you got your roommates into it now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I often say this when running demos at conventions. I'm not just wearing the t-shirt. Like, this is a really good game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Riot Quest is super fun. 
All right, so I just added these kind of corner details. It's really bright, Tony. The white. Just like it's your oh personality, yeah, it's got it, yeah. Super blown out. Um, that's, right. that's because you're, work, you're working with white materials and it gets close to the light. You're working with a white material. <laughs> I do want right. to point out, it, because we, we were talking about favorite factions and that uh, there, are, there are two factions at the launch of Warcaster. Um, but because the model count for Warcaster is much lower, it's between 25 and 30 models that you actually have, uh, it, it's much more reasonable to get into uh, multiple factions. So I, I see these kind of weird insets, and this is one of those things that, um, that kind of screams electrical conduit box. I like to kind of fill those with some sort of detail. Uh, what these are meant for is you, it has a little hole in it and you can screw it into the wall. Uh, it, it basically, you guys can kind of see that here. It locks into the, to the input. Um, so I'm gonna just, I have this kind of styrene rod and I'm just gonna kind of slip that in there and you know, extend it out a little bit past there. And uh, yeah, we'll cut that. Actually, I just had an idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a poll. I want to see what um, our viewers' faction choices for now are for, for Warcaster. Are you going to put Marcher Worlds Alliance and then wait and see? Well, for right now, I want to know, I wanna know what, uh, what people think about the first two, two factions. Oh, you're doing a straw poll? Yeah. Nice. Any other fun questions we've got going on? How's chat doing? Sorry, I'm so focused on this right now. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. And you guys are quiet today. They're enthralled by you. They're at a loss for words. Everyone saw the back of your head, and now they don't know what to do. I got a haircut. It looks beautiful, Danny. Thanks, man. You're yeah, welcome. I thought it would help live stream, but apparently it still doesn't. <laughs> Man, Brother Chaplain Kage is, uh, where's the pole? Where is it? Okay, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming in Take right it now. Take it easy, Kage. Take it easy. Is it Kage? Did we establish that? Yeah, uh, it's Japanese. Like this, the legend of Kage? Like Naruto? What? Like Naruto? Isn't that like Hokage or something? I don't know. I was thinking about the NES game. Mm. All right, so you guys can see I'm adding this, uh, just kind of pushing some Oh, in there. yeah. Adding that. I mean, it's not like it has a ton of replay value, there. but. Uh. <laughs> boom, boom. Little, little zip, kicky kick. Boop, boop. Ah. Faye's disappointed. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure we'll find out. Hey, remember that time I cut the corners off that thing? I kind of like that bit. So I'm actually going to add it to the top here. I think that will add another level of detail. Oh, she's disappointed in your Naruto comment. Naruto. All right. Sweet. Um, let's see what else we got. Where's that square stock? There we go. Oh, God, Keanu Reeves is coming back. I love, love <laughs> Keanu Reeves. I love how Travis always gets in the middle of that <laughs> Keanu Reeves panorama. <laughs> uh, never change, Travis. We got some of, our, some of our viewers are talking about how they keep our stream on in the background just to listen to <laughs> while, they, while they work on something else. We got people doing hobby projects, working on cars. Thanks for joining us. Aggie being all cool, being like, I'm slicing a 3D print from this a is, personal 3D printer. Burr, 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 burr. This is like a pretty chill day. I'm just, I'm really enjoying kicking back and just watching Danny make cuts and Friday, watching this building baby. come together. Friday. I'm uh, chomping at the bit. I gotta go get some more Helga's made. <laughs> <laughs> the demand is high. The dand. You know what's the best part? That joke is already played out in old. But it's not a joke for you. It's a joke for me. So it will We're never putting die. your name into everything? Yeah. 
My favorite part is when people are like, your jokes aren't funny. And I'm like, that's because they weren't made for you. They're for me. Well, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Always happy. Uh, Just so you guys are aware, this show is about Danny, not you. That's right. You know, when we do our cool, uh, what's it called? Super Saiyan power dance. Oh, I posted, yeah, I posted that link for the straw pool. We Alec, become, here, I'll, I'll put it in again. We can become Danner. What, you're saying we do the fusion dance? Fusion dance, yeah, and then we'll become Danner. It would be awesome. I think, I think, it's, I think it's better this way. And nobody wants to take some time inside of my head, trust me. And you don't want to be this height, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mark, Mark Rowe is saying he's just listening to what we're doing while he celebrates two-year anniversary as a painting studio. Congratulations. Very nice. That's absolutely fantastic. Tell your brother Mike I said hello. I am 5'8 and have been since sixth grade, Brother Chapman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. How should I do this? Am I Goku or Vegeta? Trunks. I'm probably Boo. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we're going to go into this circle template, right? This thing's sweet. Uh, you can get it at like any office supply store in the drafting section for making blueprints. But what I'm going to do is I want to find a, uh, a cool kind of... Uh, I want to make sure that this is bigger than the hole. So I'm kind of sizing it over it. Bigger than this. Uh, what? Sorry. We're, we're, we're being very disrespectful and being distracted by the chat. And so now I'm paying attention to Danny. We good here? We're good. You good, Tony? Yeah? All right, dope. So uh, I found the size that I like. And what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to make a... Uh, Cardboard template first before I do anything. Everybody's freaking out that you got serious for a minute. Oh no, that's the best part is I'm never serious. I just, uh, uh, I am. He's like the whole, I that's am. my secret. I'm always angry. No, I, I get, I do get, and Tony can attest to this, every now and then I, I get serious. Normally when I'm angry about something. Um, but I also don't really get angry either. Let's see. What am I doing? Drawing a half circle? No, no, no. I'm doing math poorly. <laughs> uh, there's got to be an easier way to do this, but we're just going to jump right in one second. So I mean, what, is, what is the issue? Um, I want... Math is the issue, apparently. No. One second. It, I really want to have a piece that kind of spans both of these holes. Okay. But creating the template is kind of, uh, I'm really happy about the pun dankster right now. <laughs> uh, creating the template for that is proving to be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to address this a different way. So we've got three and three quarter inch, uh, the midline. Sorry, multitasking. Give me one second. Okay, so then that drops in at one and two and three quarter inches are our center. <laughs> one and two and three quarter inches. Okay, so that means if I go. <laughs> well, you see, that's a uh, template with various sized circles. For tracing. One, what did I just say? Three and three quarters. Perfect, okay. And then, boom. And then what? One inch, center point. And then two and three quarter inches. And I will explain exactly what I'm doing in a second. I All right. I have never seen so much bouncing between millimeters and inches in my life. It depends where stuff lines up. So if I can land on a particular number, I'll go, like in centimeters, if I'm like, all right, that's five centimeters on the dot, I'll go with that. This is exactly why I don't want to do the fusion dance with you, because it would explode my brain. This is not organized enough, and I can't handle it. I'm going to drop these down. Okay. 
All right, now I can explain what I just did. So I created a, I'm creating a template so I can test the shape out before I cut it out of styrene, which is a more expensive material. This is just a manila folder. It's cardstock. Um, so what I wanted to find was a, I want to have a piece that basically does this. All right, because it'll just create a really cool detail. Um, so what I did was I had to find what this overall length is, what these center points are, right? So that then when I line up my circle template, I know. I'm just going to show you now. It'll make sure, sense. Show no this part to your about, kids see it. <laughs> so that they have an answer to, uh, you know, when they when they ask their geometry teacher, "What am I ever going to use this for?" You're I'm not gonna, doing math. You just measured and said you did math. I counted. They also told us we weren't just going to have calculators on us all the time. Dude. Shows how much they know. <laughs> you know what's amazing? So I was like weirdly okay at math. I was not good. But anyone that knows me well would probably assume I'd be very bad at math. How far in math did you make it? Uh, I got at least to like calculus or pre-calc or something. Like, you know, the normal Normal, not super advanced, but not, you know, algebra two, like. Uh, so um, what ended up happening was I was bad at math, and then when I finally got to use a calculator, <laughs> I suddenly became, like, good. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it was amazing how big a difference not having to remember math facts made. Um, again, it's like the mixing up number thing. All right, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to find the overall. Okay, so 30 mil. Watch none of this work out. So we're going to drop a line at 30 I am mil. super confused on what's going on here, but I'm also very excited to see it. Okay. So wanna, while Danny's doing cuts, we'll update everybody on the faction poll. Let me just get refreshed results here. Marcher so, Worlds yeah, killing it. Marcher Worlds, 78% of our voters. A lot of rebel like sympathizers. Mar I'm yeah. That. I yeah. Everybody likes that. the underdog. Not me. Oh, that's my style. No. For sure. uh, established domination. That's, uh, that's good, where I like to be at. That's a good band name, right? <laughs> Side note. Established <laughs> domination. All right. We got some people who are saying they're hanging out, waiting for the other factions. You, I, I do want to remind you that participating in this straw poll commits you to nothing in the future. It's just no, a actually, general, general interest level in, in what you've seen so far. By, uh, no, Tony's lying. So what we just <laughs> did was by writing, writing into the straw poll, uh, we now have all of your info and you are automatically max funding the Kickstarter. It's completely how that works. <laughs> that is true. I'm really it's glad in the fine I got print. a laugh out of Tony because I was really nervous making that joke for a second. <laughs> um, so I now have this, this template, and it's pretty close to okay. Um, what I'm going to do, though, and another reason why I make a paper template is on something where I know it has to be mechanically sim uh, symmetrical, I go like this to check everything. All right. One, nine and a, no, let's try inches. Boom, three and three quarters. So that would be one and however many eighths this is, correct? No, that's not math. This is embarrassing right now. <laughs> one and a half goes to three. Is it this? It's this. One and seven eighths. Crushed it. All right, so one and seven eighths is my center midline. So if I fold along that line, I should. Be able to check the symmetry. And fix anything I need to before I cut it out of styrene. Does that make sense? So you can see here. I have a slight overlap, so I can go in. I can trim that back just a little bit. Unfold it. See how we look. Dorian, that would make a lot of sense 
Unfortunately, that's not allowed. What's that? So couldn't you use the grid behind you to make sure that it's somewhat straight slash square? Mm, kinda. Rule number one, if it makes too much sense, it's not allowed. No, that still qu isn't quite gonna work. Uh, it's kinda hard to explain why, but it wouldn't work perfectly. Because it'd be hard to see through since it's, it's a circle, right? That, that's what makes it more difficult. All right, so we're just Travis gonna... is asking you if you're making it symmetrical because your eye will catch it. Yeah, because it's a straight versus curve. Uh, that's like a shape, an overall shape contrast. Uh, so your eye is going to go directly to it. So you don't want to confuse anyone. Um, I'm really struggling getting this to be right. Steve Smith, I don't get to pick the uh, models that we feature on P3 Painters, but I absolutely love your paint job of Dr. Stygius. The white coat with the blood splatter is fantastic. Is it posted to P3 Painters? I'm not sure, but he posted okay. it in the uh, in the Ryquest Facebook group. Post that to uh, post post pictures of your painted privateer models to Instagram okay. with hashtag P3 Painters because we look at those every week, and then uh, and we like to feature stuff and show off what everyone's doing. And if you are painting up models, you want to go to P hashtag P3 Painters. If you are doing conversions or terrain building or anything like that, post them to P3 Kit Bashers. Um, and yeah, we love, we love seeing custom stuff. And we love showing it off. Now I'm just devolving because I did everything wrong because live stream and time, I'm just devolving into uh, winging it. That's where you get your best work done. Uh, I'm actually weirdly, and this will surprise everyone on live stream, a prep guy. I do a lot of prep work because I don't like to have to redo things. That's why I'm pretty quick. Um, but on the front end, I do a surprising amount of prep. Perfect. All right, so this is going to be good. And then the cardstock is just thick enough. He says, measure twice, cut once. My grandpa used to say, I cut it three times, but it was still too short. <laughs> you know what else is too short? Q Jeopardy theme. You. Oh, ouch. You know what? I am very happy with my frame. I have infinite pushing power. The, I like, have uh, the shape, the shape that is purely square. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's making garb for uh, medieval fantasy pursuits. Just basically involves sewing rectangles together. Right. It's very easy. Yeah, Tanner's a big uh, larp, nerd, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he makes a lot of cool custom like armor and stuff and prop work. Uh, he's a pretty good fabricator himself. That's and, awfully uh, nice of you. That's high praise coming from you. He um, been doing leather work for a long time. I haven't haven't touched the steel in a while because I don't have a proper shop anymore. But, but it does have to make it easier, right? Being literally a square. Oh yeah, yeah. easily. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. If if there was actual shape to my body, then I would have to like spend way more time making my armor patterns and stuff. What but, did, uh, but I don't. What did Hungerford say? You are a Roblox. The a Roblox. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That happened. So now, any time that my girlfriend sees something related to uh, Roblox, or like in a store, or like something like that, like a toy, she'll be like, "It's you!" And uh, yeah, thanks for that. So um, yeah, I was just about to do that. All right. So Travis asked a good question: How am I cutting these circles out? As you can see, uh, I cut these angled cuts uh, because styrene is made. Um, to kind of score it and snap it, I try to create a lot of break points. It just makes cutting the circle out easier. I'll show you why. When I snap it, you kind of just got to see it. It's going to basically pop out in, uh, in a lot of different pieces. It kind of gives it more areas to flex, which is going to make the circle. Creates relief on your cut. A lot, yeah. The circle is going to be a lot cleaner, and it, 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 will, cr it will keep it from like tearing because it allows it to flex in a lot of different ways. Um, so you guys can kind of see that here. Boom, boom. There we go. Um, here we go. Let's see if we have to see that. And Danny, I don't know what you've got left to do on here, but we've got about 
20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to, cool. to finish up. So I saw some pipe pieces over there. Is that something that we're going to be able to we're get fitted this. onto this? Okay. No, we'll finish the whole thing. Oh, right on. Who do you think I am? I don't, well, I'm just throwing it out there. This man's have, a semi-professional. If you say, if you say it's going to be done, I have no doubts. I mean, it'll be tight, but I, I think we'll get there. Maybe not the, the door, but we'll, we'll try. Because I kind of wanted to do something really cool for the door, but. You don't need a door. Just stack all your storage into a pile and get the get a crane to lift that thing over the top of it, set it down. <laughs> Just cover everything in a box. It's, we gotta spend this federal grant somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I think the marcher worlds have too much to do trying to keep up. They're like, no time for doors. Just go. Just go. <laughs> Just pick the whole building up. We'll just demo it when we need to get something out of it. We'll just blow it up. Everything's more fun when you blow it up. Man, I'm making a mess in Tony's studio. Not the first time. It's all right. <laughs> Remember resin day? There's a, awesome. yeah, there's a lot that goes on in here. So I feel super That's bad. why I have my very own broom. Every time we do get your paint on or paint jam, and I'm like, do you need help cleaning up? And Tony's like, no, I got it. And there's just like paint everywhere. <laughs> Model filings, clippings. Yeah. Tony is a true Jim, and we don't deserve him. Yeah, Michael Miller, put it in a box. We'll figure out how to unpack it later. That is unfortunately uh, along the lines of too many of my mantras where I'm like, I'll figure it out later, and I regret it every time. They skipped step one, which is cut a hole in the box. I mean, Tony, you worked in film. I mean, you work in film. Yeah. Hey, we'll just fix it in post. It's fine. That's Tony's favorite well, phrase. Well, I do the post here at Privateer Press, so uh, it's very convenient to say I'll fix it in post, and then I'm almost always like, why didn't I just... Take care of it then. Right. It's way more work now. And it always comes when I'm, when I'm like, when the deadline is starting to crunch, I realize right. how much extra work it's going to be. Yeah. And what were you doing before you got here again? Uh, Privateer Press? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just doing... You were doing like more corporate filming, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I did a bunch Give of corporate video work. Give the a little background. Yeah, I worked on feature films, doing, uh, doing lighting, some camera work. Warehouse uh, safety Commercials. Videos. Yeah, just... <laughs> It's all over the place, but I'm a big nerd and I love models, and uh, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to make movies for Privateer. Well, that is not correct, but we are just gonna go with it. We'll fix it a little bit. Danny, didn't you cut a hole in a box for a Halloween costume like last year? Says Sean Dooley. You were the plank from Ed, Ed and Eddie, weren't you? <laughs> I was. There's a really great uh, photo on an Insider article of me like Jeff I think it might still be my insider photo uh Jeff replaced the photo of me with me in my plank costume priming stuff in the spray booth <laughs> Kelly came to work on Halloween dressed as a trencher dude it was such a good costume <laughs> <laughs> striker that's future Tony's problem that is one of my problems is that uh, present Tony doesn't care a rip about future Tony that was a common uh, Jeffism back when we worked in resin together. And be like, that's a problem for future Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things is like in college when I'd go out drinking and I'd like plan ahead and have like some amazing leftover. And I just remember like waking up my roommates once screaming when I got in, God bless you, past Danny. <laughs> bless you as I like found the pad thai leftovers that are still in my fridge. <laughs> Oh my god, wait. I only have like 13 minutes left. Oh, sweet, sweet goodness. Alec is asking when I'm going to make a major motion picture in the War Machine universe. He's uh, almost done with it. I'm he did it all himself. <laughs> Coming to theaters in April. <laughs> with a single camera and cut paper. Stop motion! No, that's uh, I'm, I'm primed and ready, no pun intended. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Bull. Wilson, Bull. Wilson you and, totally intended that. And Privateer have to uh, green light it. We'll get going. I want to play the rule at Gunner. <laughs> you know what Wilson should dress up as for Halloween sometime? 
Don't say striker. Don't say striker. No, no, don't no, say striker. no, no. How good would it be if he was just a volleyball? What? <laughs> <laughs> just uh, the ultimate. And cast- we are ending the stream early today, folks. <laughs> the ultimate. Thanks cast- for away, joining Joe. us. Come on, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> thank, thank you, Faye. I'm glad you you see me as a perfect roulette gunner. She just he called is, you a dwarf. <laughs> he, is, he is short and round. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to glue some details to this in a second. Okay. Whoopsies. So I'm very, like, I, I have to admit, I'm very surprised by how involved this process has been in cutting these out because this is the sort of thing, if I was at home on my table and I was like, I'm just going to give these circles, you know, some, this little eyebrow detail right here, that it would seem like it was going to be Super quick, having but, it, but getting it right is really taking correct, some time. Getting it since it's two of them. Getting it correct is, is a little bit difficult because I want this kind of nice, like one eighth of an inch border. And I can always just go in and trim it a little bit after the fact, kind of carve it back. All right, we're good enough right now for that. Uh, so let's see, what do I want to add? What do I want to add? Ten minutes for doors, Danny. Ten All minutes for right. doors. Um, here's I'm, what I'm going to do. Two, oh, ouch. That was mean, Striker. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hmm. Hmm. Pipe. Nice. I like that one. Dope. Okay. And then where is my... Perfect. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Brother Chaplain Kage, we are not doing any kit bashers today. We're reserving all of the time today to build this, uh, this piece of terrain. For Danny! But please continue to send pictures of your projects. Hashtag P3KitBashers. We look at all the social media. Instagram is um, the one that's uh, easiest for us. It's the most likely to be seen on there. Um, and is, yeah, that's the best place to put it. But if you can't put it on Instagram, post it up on Facebook. Post it up on uh, Twitter. I shouldn't say all the social medias. That's literally the three we'll check. Did you just use a 30 mil base as a flange for that pipe? Yep. Very nice. Whoopsies. Okay, stick. So there's no door, they just crawl in through a pipe. No, 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 there will be. <laughs> no, there will be a door. Except okay. I shouldn't have glued that on. Tanner, I have, I have an embarrassing question for you. It's not an embarrassing question. I'm embarrassed to have to ask it. Uh-oh. What is a flange? Oh no! A flange? Yeah. No. Like, this is a word I've heard before. I've, I, I've changed. Pipe. I've changed out a toilet in my house, so I know that there is a flange involved. But I've never been sure what a flange is. So in this particular <laughs> case, Dan, it's just a flare out that it uses to either move into the wall or connect to the wall or to a pipe on the other side of the wall, almost like a uh, like a coupling. It's like okay. an input. So but basically, if I, if I had a wall and I poked a pipe through it coming back at me and then I bent the edges of it out so that it made a hole to like push another pipe into, would that be a flange? Uh, no, because you would connect those two pipes either with, with like a weld or a coupler of some kind. The flange is mostly to seal around the pipe so that there's okay. not a hole between the wall and the pipe that's okay. causing cold air or whatnot to get in. I, mean, I really want to play the more you know music right now because that was a weird tangent, but I, it came up. I've always wanted to know. Tangent. I'm going to use one of these. So uh, like an exhaust fan? Yeah. Beautiful. One of these cool little cast bits. And I'm going to use this circle that already exists to my advantage. Advantage. Um, <laughs> and uh, door time. So you guys can already see it's kind of really coming together now. Scientologist is asking if the squeeze bottle is super glue or accelerant. It's accelerant. This thing really took a lot of shape in like the last 10 I minutes. Know. I'm impressed. This is, we've done a, like, and Danny did a bunch of talking up front. So, <laughs> so we'll say like in an hour and 10 minutes, this is how far this project has gone. This is, this is how I get 
This is how I get hired. No, Remember like, that time? What I can hang my hat on is I am, I am fast. Where Danny was like, I just do a bunch of prep work, and it looks like I get nothing done, and then in the last few minutes, it all gets done. That's exactly what just happened. That's what you just witnessed. Come on. <laughs> What's up? I'm chomping I, at the this, bit for this door. Yeah, I got to <laughs> share this one. DGC is asking if you're paid by the pun. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> If we were paid by the pun, Brian oh McLaughlin God. would be retired. By yeah, now. building of <laughs> you know, millionaires, be rich, rich men. <laughs> like, mm. at least Brian's creative. Mine just involved my my name. Come on. All right, let's see if I can get a door done within. I've got seven minutes to make a door. Now the best part about you have six minutes to make a door. I just glued my finger to this. Nice. <laughs> glued my finger to the other side too. That's sweet. I'm just trying to add some trim detail, another level of detail here. Okay. So um, I was going to say the best part about being the producer on the show is that uh, oftentimes uh, minis and projects just kind of get once once the show is over. Um, sometimes people take projects with them, other times they get left here. So there's always a good chance that whatever is being done on stream is something I get to uh, take uh, home for myself. And I'm really hoping Danny forgets this building <laughs> Two and a quarter. so it can be adopted into the Konachek household. Or you could just watch the video and build your own. It only takes an hour. I got, I got kids. I don't have an hour. Speaking of your kids. Girl Scout cookies. Today is Girl Scout cookie day. Very excited. They will be here later dropping off cookies. The, the building is a buzz. <laughs> Three and a corner. Bob coming. I've had, yeah, I've had a bunch of people in the studio this morning <laughs> going, are the cookies here? Like five minutes. <laughs> like five minutes before necks. live stream. Like they just bust in here. Like, <laughs> Dave, well, yeah. It's cool. We don't have anything to do. Y'all got any of them Girl Scout cookies? <laughs> All right. Come on. Speed, speed, speed. How much time I got? Five? Yo, I'm going to crush this. Yo, this doesn't look like a door, Danny. I will cut you. Travis is saying it's a marcher oh, building, God. and they're the enemy of the Alliance, my, my currently chosen faction. Um, yeah, but I need that building so I can destroy it, take it over, deny its use. All right, guys. We got to stop for a second here. This, this uh, Thin Mint thing, this Thin Mint Samoa obsession that everybody what? seems to love those the best. Thin mints yeah. are the best. No. You're a hop along guy, aren't yeah. you? I don't even know what a hop along is. Yeah, all right. Are you are you gonna be a contrarian? Which one is the chocolate peanut butter one? That's a hop along, isn't it? That's the tag along. Ah tag along, tag -along. same. Tag -along. Those ones are hop -along. cash money. That's Look, what I meant. Here's, so good. Here's the secret of Girl Scout cookies, because they're now in my life every year. Please prep uh, for I have sampled Tony coming. All of and many of them. I have yet to have one. That is not absolutely delicious. Like, it, they change in my mood, but they're all good. I made a mistake. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this, is, this, is this Yoshi emoji supposed to mean that it's gross is or that good? A, yeah, is that a sad Yoshi? I can't tell. Yeah, like, I think it was If off. you think chocolate and peanut butter is a bad combination, like, we don't have to agree on which one's the best cookie, but... Chocolate and peanut butter is a fantastic combination. Is a tag along a sandwich technically? Uh, no. It's no, it's a cookie with peanut butter and then it's dipped <clears throat> in. It's a like covered in. No, chocolate. I understand, but it's it's between two layers of chocolate. Doesn't that make it a cook? Doesn't that make it a sandwich? It's surrounded by chocolate, right. so it makes it a burrito. Sure, it's a chocolate burrito. A chocolate Christor peanut butter burrito with cookie in the middle. A Creestor Four has just uh, made it clear that it is a yuck Yoshi. Uh, Creestor Four, you are wrong. I don't know what else to say. We're so close, we're so close, we're so close, we're so close. How much time I got? Three minutes? Three minutes. Okay. Kage, I thought we were getting really along really well <laughs> until, uh, until right then. This is really being divisive right now. <clears throat> Divisive. You know what? It's okay for them to both be correct. No, it's not. That's not how being correct That's works, not how that works, dude. <laughs> like... I think that that's the ultimate paradox at that point, right? Watch Your me. burrito joke made our baby cry. <laughs> I saw a thing the other day. Watch me accidentally cut through the mic cord. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
there's a guy talking about him and his, uh, his significant other have broken down every food that they eat into a debate of whether or not it is a sandwich or a salad. And they said it's caused some of the most intense discussions of their relationship to this it, point. It used to drive people insane. They bring that up all the time. Yeah, in this building, two, there have been two and long conversations about what is soup and what is not. Two and three quarters, one and a half. Two and three quarters, one and a half. Remember that number. Two and three quarters by one and a half. Two and three quarters by one and a half. Four inches by three and a half centimeters. Two, I hate you. <laughs> two and a quarter by three and a half. Did I just, did I get that right? Two and a quarter. Tony, what is that? 234 by one half? <laughs> I tried, quarter. man. Not very Tra hard. <laughs> Travis got it right. I know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> two and three quarters by 11 halves. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the absolute worst. What time is it? Two minutes? Yeah, one minute. One of my favorite things to do is... One when, minute? Yeah. Ah, crap. When we're counting the loose resin parts in the morning when we do clip and count, if somebody is clearly concentrating on counting a large number of parts, you just start saying random numbers like 1, 14, 17, 29, 36, 82. <laughs> I like when Tanner does that to sneak up on him. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> he jumps. He's, Tanner is very jumpy. Very easily startled, yes. If I don't get my door, I'm going to be mad. Crap. You are down to the wire. If this door is not on there by 1130, I don't know if I can ever forgive you. Safety third, Danny. Go for speed. It is down to the wire. It's been 1129 for a while. It's going to be 1130. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. If you could see how hard he's sweating right now. No! Oh, game over, man. And I measured wrong. No, I measured wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Make it work, uh, dude. Make it work. Time out. I was wrong. Four by... Danny owes seven. me a door. Four by seven. <laughs> I love the obvious comment. That, that door, door does, does not, not fit. fit. <laughs> Four by seven. I can do it. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to stick around long enough for Danny to finish the store. Unfortunately, whatever. Uh, this does mean Danny is canceled. I saw a great hashtag on the internet this weekend or yesterday that somebody came up with, which was hashtag unleash Danny. Hashtag. Not... Okay. Go ahead and finish. That was it. I'm in. All right. It. Yeah. That's not a good idea. Clearly, it's somebody who doesn't know what's going to happen. Uncage me! <laughs> Let me be free! I see a hashtag dance canny. You don't know how close that gets me, right in the heart. <laughs> there is a consistent game that goes on back here where I call it wordsmithing, but the proper term for it is a spoonerism, where you take the first letter or syllable of two words and flip them around, mm -hmm. and they make two new words, and it is a constant game. <laughs> Uh, Luke McCool, we have a question about any new info on Warcaster or terrain for Warcaster. Well, when this video, when we're done with this live stream, it will get posted to our YouTube channel, Privateer Press Prime. You can watch Danny build this um, Marcher Worlds uh, structure from the start, from scratch. Uh, but if you want other information about Warcaster, you can always go to warcaster.com. We had a Warcast live stream on this Wednesday uh, that you can watch that has some information. And we had Hunger for on yesterday while we were painting up a Paladin Weaver, uh, talking a, uh, a little bit about some of the mechanics and game rule functions. So go check out those things. And then, uh, yeah, just stay with us and, and keep an eye on uh, our social media and everything for the next few weeks to find out what's going on. So Kage says I have a whole week worth of trash talk for Danny because he didn't finish this door. Yeah, what you don't understand right. is that I have a lifetime of trash talk for Danny. See, I'm a Steelers fan, and he's a Bengals fan, and I don't want to bore you guys with this, but uh, Bring he's it. really, really bad. His team is terrible. They're so And we're bad. in the same division, so. They're so very <laughs> bad. I'm almost done. I can always resort to that. Alarm number two has gone off. Oh my I live my life by alarms. And normally the, our live stream is over by now, so my alarms are kind of 
going off because we're normally not uh, not still streaming. Well, sorry. And I'm trying to make the things good for the... And you know what, Tony? I was thinking about giving this to you for a second, but... You don't have to give it to me. You just have to abandon it here. Abandon it? Yeah. Ugh. I'll, leave, I'll, let, I'll let you have that one if that structure stays in the studio and then disappears mysteriously. Darn it. Well, I'm making a mess of this. Well, this isn't working out. <laughs> I want to find another cool bit I can glue on this. We're okay. just going to put a googly eye on it. We got to, is this something that can be done in the next couple of minutes? Yep. Okay. Congratulations, uh, it would, King See, Colin. here's the thing. It wouldn't be a hobby hangout with Danny if there weren't a googly eye involved. Or actually Brian, because he used a googly eye. Googly eyes, eyes are those, the best, man. For the shields, yeah. Come on. This will be some sort of cool sensor. What is a failure word that we can use Dan in? Dantastrophe, maybe? Yeah, Dantastrophe. That's good. Dandemic? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> All right. That's when it's never ending <laughs> failures? There it is. Holy cow, Boom. that's sweet. Not, I mean, knocked oh, out in just, just over an hour. Crushed it. How do the Crushed handles Crushed it. How do, you, how do you grab those handles? <laughs> what? How do you grab They're the handles? They're not handles. They're just cool little details. Use your imagination, Tanner. Imagination. I want to glue one of these on it. What's this cool bit? I'm just going to keep going until Tony leashes me off of here. That's going to be right, <laughs> right after you attach this part. Abandon all hope you In fact, here. I'm going to start playing the outro music. Boom. There will be another one of these on the other side. Wow. Wow. Okay. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed that hobby hangout. <laughs> My brain is so frazzled. That was so much to do in 90 minutes. Come see us on Staff Showdown on Tuesday. That. <laughs> do yeah, that. Yeah, next, next Tuesday, Staff Showdown. Get your first look at a Warcaster playthrough. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It was right. a lot of fun. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.